Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HTTP Test here. I'm sitting beside the Panasonic AZ2000, which is the Japanese brand's flagship OLED TV for 2020. This is the 65-inch version, model number TX65HZ2000B, but it's also available in a smaller screen size of 55 inches. Just like its predecessor, the GZ2000, the Panasonic AZ2000 features a custom professional OLED panel which sets it apart from all other OLED televisions on the market. In essence, it's equipped with a large piece of metal heatsink which serves to dissipate heat from the OLED panel, allowing for higher peak brightness and average picture level than conventional OLEDs. The improved heat management also helps clear up image retention faster than all other OLED televisions without the custom Pro panel which in theory should prolong the lifespan of the AZ2000. However, the custom Pro panel does not come cheap. It has to be manufactured in a limited production run, separate from the mass production line, making the Panasonic AZ2000 one of the most expensive OLED TVs on the market, size for size. Upgrades over last year's GZ2000 include 120Hz black frame insertion, whose blanking interval can be adjusted, Filmmaker mode with intelligent sensing, Dolby Vision IQ ambient light compensation, 0.5% and 1.3% grayscale and gamma adjustments for more precise near black tracking, a hard clipping function for those who intend to use the TV as a grading monitor, Dolby Vision calibration, as well as eARC support. Because of the additional metal plate and also the up firing Dolby Atmos speakers at the top of the TV, the chassis is somewhat bulkier than most OLED televisions, even though the bezel and corners remain impressively slim. The bottom of the screen is bolstered by Technics tuned speakers, and the television sits on a central pedestal stand which we appreciated for its weight, stability, and narrow footprint. The connections are found on the left of the display, including four HDMI 2.0b ports, although Panasonic has managed to implement two HDMI 2.1 features, namely Auto Low Latency Mode and Enhanced ARC. The supplied remote is the premium version with brushed metallic front, balanced weight, assured tactile feedback, and some backlit buttons. It's by far our favorite remote control from the Japanese manufacturer. Panasonic's My Home Screen 5.0 portal isn't as intuitive or comprehensive as rival smart TV platforms but does offer many key streaming apps such as Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube and Rakuten TV, with the notable omission being Disney+. There's Freeview Play on board too, providing access to all the major UK catch-up TV services including BBC iPlayer. Before I move on to talk about picture quality, I would like to thank UK electrical retailer Crabden Mall Leeds for sponsoring this video. I work closely with them on various projects, and I find the staff's knowledge on the products they sell to be excellent. They'll give you unbiased, independent advice for your purchase. If you are thinking about buying a new television, even if it's not the Panasonic HZ2000, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0113 Mention HTTV Test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Okay. The 65-inch Panasonic HZ2000 uses a 2020 WRGB OLED panel from LG Display, which is characterized by the Z-shaped green subpixel. While OLED display technology is capable of delivering true blacks due to its self-emissive properties, it is notoriously difficult to get the region just above black correct because of the big jump in electrical current from the off state, when black is black, to an on state where only a very dark shade of grey needs to be displayed. This is the primary reason why OLED TVs have traditionally suffered from many near-black issues, ranging from crushed or over-brightened shadow detail to macro-blocking or flickering artifacts in dark scenes. In my opinion, Panasonic OLEDs have the best near-black handling on the market, probably because the company's engineers have accumulated extensive knowledge and experience from dealing with the now-defunct PDP or plasma display panel technology which was also self-emissive. 
The opening sequence from The Revenant is a good test of any OLEDs near black accuracy. There's a fade to black from a bright logo, then a gradual fade in from black to reveal the floor and the sleeping characters. And the Panasonic HZ2000 passed with flying colors without needing any calibration in the most accurate out of the box filmmaker mode picture preset. LG's 2020 OLEDs, including the CX and GX, would appear to washed out pre calibration owing to over brightened near black EOTF, while Sony OLEDs would present a harsher transition along the floor because they don't offer any grayscale adjustment points below 5% video stimulus. Being the pioneer in recognizing and addressing OLED's near black chrominous overshoot issue since 2018 models, Panasonic also continues to suppress above black flashing artifacts most effectively in heavily compressed dark scenes on the AZ2000. Color accuracy was outstanding both out of the box and after calibration, with average delta errors of less than 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured, and no inaccuracies exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3, resulting in natural and cinematic colors in real-world content, be it in SDR or HDR. Even with Intelligent Frame Creation or IFC disabled, the Panasonic HZ2000 performed 5.5 pull-down correctly to present 24 frames per second movies smoothly without telecynic judder. And if you are one of those who are sensitive to the stutter inherent in 24p films, you can set intelligent frame creation to min to smooth things out without too obvious a soap opera effect. Like all Panasonic televisions with the ACX processor, the Panasonic HZ2000 continued to exhibit occasional frame skipping in certain smoky or foggy scenes in HDR mode. But it happened so rarely that we think most people probably won't notice it. One thing we forgot to mention in our previous review of the step down HZ1000 was that Panasonic's black frame insertion is capped at 60Hz on the mid and max settings for 24Hz and 60Hz video signal. So let's say if you are watching a 24p movie, setting BFI to mid or max would actually introduce some telecynic judder so it's best not to go beyond min. Otherwise, the black frame insertion can be used at lower settings, together with intelligent frame creation, motion compensated frame interpolation, to boost motion resolution from the sample and hole baseline of 300 lines, to 1080 lines or even higher, all without incurring the traditional black frame insertion or BFI side effects of visible flicker and severe brightness drop, at least in SDR. And with the right settings, we could obtain a level of motion clarity that rival even the best plasmas. Unlike on LG's 2020 OLEDs, engaging black frame insertion on the most useful min and mid settings didn't crush shadow detail, again a testament of Panasonic's commitment to video fidelity. Upscaling quality was very good, retrieving sharp detail from this SMPT RP133 test card in 576i with only very minor fizziness and junk pixels, which means standard definition content from even grubby channels won't appear overly soft. Engaging the pure direct control can extract full chroma bandwidth from this 1080p test pattern from the Spears & Mansell HD benchmark disk, but it will also disable other video processing such as 5.5 pulldown, so pure direct should only be enabled for PC use if necessary. Native gradation quality was right up there with the very best, allowing for smooth gradients assuming the source was up to scratch in the first place. And Panasonic has all but eradicated the posterization around bright HDR objects seen on the company's 2019 OLEDs. Please bear in mind that YouTube's encoding may introduce some posterization which wasn't present in real life when we captured the footage. For dealing with posterization in beat staff content, the Panasonic AZ2000 doesn't offer a dedicated smooth gradation decontouring filter similar to that found on LG and Sony OLEDs, but if things get as desperate as trying to get a haircut in lockdown, you can use the MPEG remaster function to smooth out the posterization. although since it's a spatial filter, 
Be aware that you'll also be scrubbing away some fine detail, especially at higher settings, so we generally wouldn't go higher than min. As you can expect from OLED, bright uniformity on our review sample was supremely clean, with no sign of dirty screen effect, bending, or color tinting on full field gray slides. Dark uniformity also ranked as one of the better ones we've come across. There's mild reverse vignetting along both sides of the screen, and some thin vertical streaks typical of consumer OLEDs. But crucially, our HZ2000 review unit didn't exhibit the darkened patch on the left side of the screen observed on all other 65-inch 2020 OLEDs we have reviewed to date. For HDR, peak brightness measured close to 900 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point, and 135 nits full fill. This IP3 color gamut coverage came in at 99% UV, while REC 2020 was 78%, with no significant change in the spectral power distribution recorded using our Jetty 1511 reference spectral radiometer. While on paper, the HZ2000's peak brightness is more than 200 nits higher than other 2020 OLED models, in practice, the majority of HDR scenes won't look obviously brighter than conventional OLEDs. There are two reasons for this. One. Even though the Panasonic HZ2000 is capable of higher peak brightness and average picture level, at the end of the day, it's still an OLED that's governed by ABL or Automatic Brightness Limiter circuitry, with full screen luminance capped at 135 nits. Perhaps more importantly, Panasonic as a company is not employing any underhanded tricks to manipulate the PQ EOTF tracking to try and give the impression of a brighter panel and the company has my highest respect for this uncompromising adherence to image accuracy. With this in mind, where you would most likely see an improvement on the HZ2000 versus a conventional OLED would be in areas containing very bright detail on screen, such as the curtains against the bright windows in this scene from the darkest hour which is mastered to 1000 nits. On conventional OLEDs, which rarely exceed 700 nits in peak brightness, all the highlight detail have to be squeezed into a smaller range. So even if the TV is trying to tone map correctly to preserve all these bright details, they will be so close together, so compressed, that they will appear clipped. On the 900 nit Panasonic HZ2000, there is more brightness range, a bigger canvas, so to speak, for these bright details to be expressed clearly to be separated from each other without the need for aggressive tone mapping, thus coming closer to the original artistic intent, assuming the content is mastered to 1000 nits of course. With the HZ2000, you're not buying a higher brightness, you're buying a larger canvas. In another life, I might have been a slogan writer for the UK government, control the virus and all that. There's a dynamic HDR effect setting, which from our testing boosted the luminance of certain small specular highlights without affecting the overall brightness, hence preserving accuracy better than the dynamic tone mapping function on LG OLEDs. Besides HDR10, the Panasonic HZ2000 also supports broadcast-friendly HLG, as well as Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus dynamic metadata formats. The Dolby Vision is TV-LED, which is generally superior to player-LED implementations, allowing for spectacular richness and accurate reproduction of the creator's intent on a scene-by-scene -scene or even frame-by-frame -frame basis. We did encounter frame drops upon scene cuts in only one Ultra HD Blu-ray title, namely Aquaman, which could be eradicated by switching to player led Dolby Vision either on our Oppo 203 4K Blu-ray player or directly on the television itself by selecting Dolby Vision Mode 2. We suspect the frame drops were due to a delay in TV-LED Dolby Vision processing, causing the dynamic metadata from the previous scene to spill over into the next scene. But to be clear, we only spotted it on Aquaman 4K BD, which played fine on the LG CX. We watched many other Dolby Vision discs and Netflix shows on the HZ2000, and didn't see the same problem despite specifically looking out for it. Conceptually, we liked Panasonic's implementation of Dolby Vision IQ ambient light compensation technology. In a pitch black or dimly lit room, 
Dolby Vision IQ would look identical to the most accurate Dolby Vision Dark Picture preset, but in a brighter room with more ambient lighting. Dolby Vision IQ would brighten the EOTF to make the picture more watchable in a manner that's still relatively faithful to the creative intent. It's just unfortunate then that a number of picture settings are undefeatably engaged in Dolby Vision IQ mode, including sharpness, noise reduction, and even intelligent frame creation which would introduce some Sopra effect or SOE however mild, therefore putting off purists like me. Talking about ambient light correction, Panasonic has also developed its own version called Intelligent Sensing for all other non Dolby Vision content, namely SDR or Standard Dynamic Range, HLG or Hybrid Log Gamma, HDR10, and HDR10. Intelligent Sensing is only active in filmmaker mode, and in HDR mode is not controlled by the light sensor setting but by the HDR Auto Brightness function under the HDR Brightness Settings submenu. If we compare the scene from Kingsman watched in a bright room using filmmaker mode with intelligent sensing, against the Professional One picture preset, also with HDR Auto Brightness enabled, you will see that filmmaker mode with intelligent sensing applied some EOTF adjustment to make the shadow detail more visible in the presence of ambient light. We measured SDR Filmmaker mode versus Professional 2 mode with the exact same calibrated settings and light sensor enabled in a bright room, and confirmed that while both picture presets increased their respective peak luminance, gamma compensation only took place in Filmmaker mode, dropping to around 2 which, in our opinion, looked more washed out than the 2.2 gamma we normally target for a moderately bright room. Nevertheless. The takeaway message is that Filmmaker Mode is by far the most important picture preset on Panasonic's 2020 OLED televisions, including the HZ2000. Not only does it provide the most accurate picture out of the box, it also holds the key to one of the more effective ambient light compensation algorithms we've witnessed on a consumer television so far. For gaming, Input lag measured 21 milliseconds in game mode with both 1080p SDR and 4K HDR 60Hz video signal, which should be responsive enough for most users. However, the lack of variable refresh rate and 120Hz support will probably put off those who are looking for a TV to go with next-gen consoles, such as the Xbox Series X and the PS5 arriving at the end of the year. I have to talk about three more things before I wrap up. Due to faster heat dissipation from the metal heatsink, the Panasonic HZ2000 was able to clear up image retention quicker than any other OLED on the market, matched only by the GZ2000 it replaces. Here, I've displayed a 10% window from the Spears & Munsell UHD HDR benchmark disk at full blast for 10 seconds, then switched to a full field gray slide to let you see how fast the residual image disappeared. New for 2020, Panasonic has added a hard clipping function where you can turn off the TV's tone mapping to mimic the behavior of a mastering monitor for color grading. But for non-professional users, it can also be a fun and educational way to see the brightness level at which different elements on screen get blown out. We are using this horses in snow clip from the Spears & Munsell montage as an example. Just don't forget to turn tone mapping back on for actual HDR viewing. Last but not least, the Technics Tune speaker system on the Panasonic AZ2000 remains one of the best we've heard from a consumer television, delivering a wide soundstage, impressive clarity and tonal balance, as well as punchy bass which can be further bolstered by an external subwoofer if you so choose. After adjusting the various space tune parameters to optimize the sound for our test room, the integrated upfiring speakers produce some of the most convincing Dolby Atmos overhead effects we've experienced from an in-TV audio system. Of course, the perfectionist in me still craved for proper in-ceiling and surround speakers, but for those of you who don't have the space, the budget, or your partner's approval for an external home theater system, the Panasonic HZ2000 is probably as good as you're going to get from built-in TV speakers when it comes to Dolby Atmos experience. Right, I think I've been talking on and on for more than 20 minutes. 
So let's wrap up this video. For some people, Panasonic don't come across as a sexy TV brand. Maybe their TV design isn't as cutting edge as rival manufacturers. Maybe their advertising isn't as swanky as Samsung's and Sony's. Maybe the continued absence of true HDMI 2.1 ports is signaling a stagnation in innovation. But to me, someone who values image accuracy both personally and professionally, Panasonic TVs paint the most beautifully cinematic pictures, and the HZ2000 is the company's best television yet. On top of excellent near-black tracking, color fidelity, motion clarity, and video processing, the Panasonic HZ2000 offers the highest peak brightness among 2020 OLEDs for more accurate HDR presentation, and is almost impervious to image retention thanks to its custom professional OLED panel. The lack of true HDMI 2.1 connectivity is disappointing. But at least there's ALLM and eARC on board, and one can argue that gamers are not Panasonic's target demographics anyway, not with a niche product that costs £4,300. Some may bemoan the very high price, especially in the current financial climate. But as I've explained earlier in this video, the custom pro panel with metal heatsink has to be assembled in small numbers, separate from the main production line, thus bumping up the manufacturing cost. All aspects considered, the Panasonic TX65HZ2000B delivers the best picture quality and the most convincing Dolby Atmos sound among 2020 TVs I've reviewed so far, and so it deservedly earns our highly recommended Best in Class award. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.